There's no way when you put this on that you're immediately not gonna feel like Batman. What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. I am just a little bit excited about this new cosplay video series that we're gonna be working on over the next handful of weeks or months or however long it takes us to actually complete this. But I'm talking about the Batman costume, that Robert Pattinson, Battinson costume that was just recently shown off in one of the newest trailers there that, you know, people were initially saying, Robert Pattinson is Batman, this is a horrible idea, but it's dark, it's gritty, and it's violent, and it looks like we might see a little bit of detective skills behind this Batman. Today, we are gonna be specifically looking at the cowl here, the neck piece, and the collar. But before we do that, I wanted to say a huge thank you to this video series sponsor, Nico Industries. NicoIndustries.com is my favorite place to get 3D printable replica prop and cosplay files. You can easily search, buy, and download files for 3D printing. Whether it's DC Comics, Marvel, or your favorite video game series, you can find a wide variety of files to pick up and download over at NicoIndustries.com. Make sure to visit the links down below where you can check out the full Battenson armor set that I will be 3D printing and showing off to you guys here over the upcoming weeks as part of this video series. And make sure to use the code UJ to save 20% off this armor set. Thanks again to Nico Industries for sponsoring this video series. In order to get started with printing the cowl, I needed to make sure that I had the sizing correctly scaled for my noggin here. There's a variety of different ways you can go about this, but I went with an approach that I've used and covered in a previous video that I have linked up above here, which basically boils down to you taking a thin slice of the helmet and printing that at a very low infill, at a very high speed, and using that until you get the scale you think fits properly. And then what I like to do is run off and print a full-sized test print before I go off and print a really highly detailed version of that file. All right, so after a whole lot of different test prints to try and get the sizing right, I went off and printed a full version of the helmet here at my finalized scale that I believe should actually work and happy to say that it fits pretty dang nicely here. I can pretty easily get it on and off my head without much fuss or pain, I should say, and it's still pretty nice and snug here where I could put in a little bit of thin foam to give it some extra padding on the inside. This was a quick 17 hour test print here. I used pretty much one perimeter all around and I think 2% infill and at a pretty fast print speed as well. All right, so I've got a handful of printers running pretty much the same print here. So here's one, just two. It's the first time I'm using TPU, by the way. Using it on the Prusa Mini. It's working, I think, pretty nicely here. Got another print going here on the Raze 3D. And I've got some resin prints going here as well. Can't can't miss out on some of these resin prints. So I ended up printing off the chin piece of the cowl in PLA in two different pieces. Again, it's too small to fit my head through. So I had to slice this here. And I mean, this in theory will work just fine, uh, but I was thinking I might want something a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more flexible. So this is where I decided I was gonna actually run off and print for the first time with TPU. So TPU is a really, really flexible material to work with. It's a little bit harder to print with. And again, this was the first time that I've ever printed with it. And I ended up using my Prusa Mini to print this neck piece here for the cowl. And what I ended up doing is again, it was too small for me to stretch over my head. So I just used some scissors to slice through the back and it's much more flexible here, a little bit more comfortable compared to that hard PLA. And it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's still a really nice fit and would go nicely with the helmet. But I had a thought was, all right, if this worked so well here on the Prusa Mini, Prusa Mini has a relatively small build volume. Can I just instead print off the entire chin and neck piece all in one print in TPU? So that's what I did over on the Raze 3D N2 Plus, and it was quite the project. So yeah, let's get this out of the printer and Check it out, look at this, should be pretty cool. I can squish, squish, squish. All right, so I'm gonna have to get the supports removed and then get a lot of this stringing cleaned up. 
Uh, I, I did run into some issues while it was printing here. It looks like maybe the nozzle got caught on certain areas. I'm guessing that's because I didn't have some of the supports going up high enough inside the print to capture some of the neck areas here. But all in all, I think this looked really well. I'm not too concerned with these defects in the prints because there is a collar piece that's gonna go over this and I'm hoping it covers up most of those issues. All right, let's see if I can muscle the supports off here. Not exactly the easiest thing to remove on TPU prints. It, I mean, it just really, really sort of melts together while it's printing. There we go. I'm also just gonna use these little snippers. Most 3D printers come with these, FDM printers come with these. It's great for also trimming off some of the excess big blobs here from the TPU prints. And then for all the stringing, we'll light some stuff on fire. So one thing that you can do to clean up the stringing inside your TPU prints is use a blowtorch. Please do not try this at home unless you have your parents' approval or you're doing it outside and you're an adult and all other cautionary stuff. So it will melt it slightly, so some of those little blobs there, it did melt those down just a little bit, but all the string just pretty much evaporated with this. The overall structural integrity of this is still intact, still nice and flexible. It's not uh, collapsing in on itself or anything like that. Obviously, you don't want to leave the heat in one spot for too long while you're doing this as well. All in all, nice and clean. The next thing you'll probably notice is it's uh, a little too small for me to actually f pull over my head. It's not that flexible. So it's, you know, very, has a lot of give to it, but not enough for me to actually pull my head through that hole. So what I'm gonna do is just slice an opening down the back of this, and then I'll actually seal it up with some Velcro. I don't know, maybe sew in a zipper. I'm not entirely sure on that, but it should allow me to actually get this around my neck. Got the back sliced almost all the way down here. Uh, I might try and figure out how I can clean up the seams a little bit here, but it's not looking bad at all. It's enough for me to slide my head over. It is really cool. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited about this. It's not too uncomfortable to wear. It is definitely stiff. I just had said that I'll probably be able to move my head. No, I'm not gonna be able to. <laughs> Even with this, it's not flexible enough. It's still too, I'm gonna be the Keaton Batman here. Yeah, so far this is, uh, this is pretty wild. This is really wild. Oh my God, I gotta redo this and paint it purple for Magneto. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, this is so awesome. And yes, I'm gonna take a selfie here. I'm just gonna now figure out how I want to have this connected Ideally from the inside, not on the outside. Maybe it's it's Velcro, I'm not entirely sure, on the inside that allows it to collapse, collapse, clasp together. No joke, this project has reignited a creative passion inside me. So excited to be working on this. All right, so this is a quick 27 hour print. I ended up having a print failure initially because of some support issues that I didn't have it properly supported. And then I also just ran into, while this was printing, it snagged here on one of the edges. I might reprint this all over again because I'm a crazy person like that. But overall, I think this printed really great. Again, a 0.6 millimeter nozzle for this. Crazy, crazy how fast this printed. Uh, loving this and the details are looking really, really crisp other than this big print issue here with a layer skip where it looks like maybe I didn't have my supports well enough under this one edge. That is looking super friggin' cool. Really friggin' cool. All right, so where we're at right now is I have the neck piece and the collar all printed in TPU. It's really nice, flexible material. There is still a good amount of cleanup that I'm gonna have to do on this. I'm interested in seeing how I can further smooth this out. I've never really, again, worked with this, not really familiar with how painting this is gonna go or if there is the ability for me to smooth out and repair some of these damaged areas or if I need to reprint it or just stick with the PLA print options that I've already worked with. And what we really haven't talked about is the updated cowl. So this is a 56 hour print that I went off and did on the CR10. This was at 0.2 millimeter layer height in this Sun Lu silk gray PLA. It's this really nice shiny metallic PLA. Uh, loving, absolutely loving the color of this. And it was very, very minimal supports. It was pretty much just around the edge 
perimeter of the, the cowl here and supporting the eyes. Nothing on the inside, which is why you see it so rough there. But yeah, it was a 56 hour print, relatively quick here, relatively quick for a two millimeter layer height uh, helmet print. They, typically these are much, much larger and much longer in terms of the print duration. And again, because I went and did all those test fittings, it fits really nicely here on my head. Yeah, there's no way I wasn't gonna print one of these on one of my big resin 3D printers, as you saw in the beginning of the video there. And the quality of this, again, there's some layer line issues here that has to do with me actually refilling the resin and my vat and not doing it slowly enough, which caused some of those ripple effects. And it's easy, really, really simple and straightforward to sand down compared to PLA or PETG prints. So this should clean up really nicely. And the reason why I went off and did this in resin was because I was half considering maybe I wanna end up making a mold and casting this and doing something like it in urethane or something along those lines. I'm not even sure yet. So it was just kind of me playing around seeing how this would turn out in resin for right now. All right, now let's put this on. I mean, it really comes together nicely here. Oh, that's incredible. It looks so good. It looks so good. I still need to figure out how to actually connect the neck to the actual cowl here so that they're not completely independent of each other. I do want them to be somewhat secured in place or I don't want this flying off my head. Uh, also the collar, I need to figure out a way to secure it to the, the neck piece here. That should be easy enough. I'll probably just end up using some Velcro to secure that on place. So it's not you know moving all around here and sliding all around. Again, I do need to figure out how I'm gonna smooth these out and ending up painting them. And then for the helmet, it's gonna go somewhat of my standard process here, which will be fun to cover in one of the upcoming videos where we'll be looking at finishing all of the different armor pieces. I mean, how can you not feel like Batman when you start suiting up like this? It's This is the first time that I've actually had a neck piece like this, and it's just incredible. And it works so well with some other costumes as well. I mean, you saw me putting it on with my Magneto helmet. It's just really, really cool. I'm going to need more of these. Definitely going to need more of these. All right, so as I mentioned, we'll be doing some more upcoming videos on the rest of this build series. Really looking forward to this project and having the full costume completed at some point here in the near future. Really excited to be working on that chest piece next here. That's probably what the, the center focus will be on the next video. So stay tuned for that. It'll hopefully be out sometime next week. Again, huge thank you to Nico Industries for sponsoring this video series. And and if you're interested, again, in any of these files and checking those out, I'll have links down below where you can use the code UJ to save 20% off your order. Hey, thanks so much for watching, you guys, and I will see you next time. Bye now. Not exactly the easiest thing to get off, though. <laughs>